we talking about Hitler. <laughs> Cause I could imagine somebody looking at this and like they're actually two two black men, uh, Project Daddy and Charm Guy, <laughs> evaluating Hitler and some of the, you know, not so bad points of him. But you know, Hitler actually took a country out of poverty. He brought a country out of like, you know, there was a uh Okay, please. I'm not. A, I'm not the history buff. I should be, but what the Treaty of Versailles, of uh, if I'm saying that right, that essentially, you know, would cripple Germany. Hitler came and actually brought that country back into an operational world power. Obviously, we know what his demise was, but I think a lot of times we we have demonized uh, the positive things that he did. Listen to what I'm saying, because it sounds wild. But nationalism, <laughs> I mean, we have a flag. We should have some nationalism behind it. It's a lot more multicultural than what Hitler was trying to do. But still, the power to bring people together under a flag, the power to bring people together under some sort of symbolism and belief was very, very powerful. And I think what we've done is we've taken someone like Trump and said, well, he's like Hitler. That's what he's trying to do here. And we've demonized that. But look what happens when you have a society that doesn't have any real nationalism. Like now, what are you really fighting for? Every Everyone can claim in a place where there's no true nationalism that they're a minority group. Everybody can say that they're being fucked with. Everybody can just be against. The, I hate to hear people talk about how they hate America and they're clocking in every day. I hate that shit. Like, I don't like how you don't like your country. You don't want to fight, but you're here every day. You call 911 if you have an emergency. I bet you would. I hate people who claim they hood, and then they say, that I hate America. Man, I love Denver Harbor. Man, I hate the United States. What? Man, I love Houston, Texas. Man, I hate the United States. What? <laughs> I get confused. Like, where did you get this ideology from? You know what I mean? And I say, where'd you get this ideology from? You say, what? <laughs> It's true. There's a disconnect in conversation, right? Mm. It's like, I'm, not, I'm trying to talk to you, but you ain't even listening to me because you're trying to figure out what you're going to do to feed yourself tomorrow. Like, poverty is literally destroying America from the inside out, but we can't have a conversation about poverty because we actually say some things like, I've heard conservatives say, that we have the richest poor people on the planet, in which we do. Like, how can you be so poor when you got an iPhone? Hey, like, two things can be true simultaneously, right? The phone is my connection to the whole entire world. Without this thing, it's really hard for me to travel. It's really hard to make purchases. Without this thing, you have no skin in the game. Anyway, that's a disingenuous argument. Yes, there are poor people who live on the streets and have an iPhone. It's fascinating. <laughs> we shame poor people so bad, right? If you make less than $75,000 a year individually, it's really hard to consider yourself middle class because middle class is more like a hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and upper middle class is 250 i wish we could have some fucking claps because i remember this white man telling me this long time ago i was 12 he said you're not really doing anything and this was in the 90s if you're not making at least 100 grand and and guess what 100 grand now annually is still rough and, and I would I would say, yeah, that's like entry level into the middle class. But if you're up a middle class, yeah, we're talking 250, 300. It, it, it really does take a lot to have something here. It does. I don't think a lot of people understand that. And then have a conversation like every person who's broadcasting information to you. They make five hundred thousand dollars a year. They make a million dollars a year talking to you while you make thirty six thousand dollars a year. And you that's so great. Deborah Duncan, she's so amazing. <laughs> Shout out to the Houston lady, man. I think you're doing a fabulous job. But you don't relate to your audience. You're a millionaire. Someone like Don Lemon, these CNN guys are these, uh, you know, well, with the with the. I guess the uh, right wing, they're called the left wing media, you know, all of them, though, they're they're getting they are all in it. That's that's what I need people to understand is it is a game indeed, because even if they're acting like they're on opposing sides of ideology in class, they're really one. And if they got to protect their class, they're going to protect that first. That's money. That's their livelihood. So, yeah, these guys are oh, we're just so oppressed. But you're sitting behind that. You're sitting behind that mic uh, as an anchor. And you're making probably half a million dollars a year. You know, who knows? Book deals and all that other shit come. No different than a preacher. Same thing. I want to know what your zip code is. I want to know what the breakdown of the demographic. I want to know the demographics of your neighborhood, Don Lemon. Who's your neighbor? Is he black like you or not? That's what I want to know. What's the percentages in your neighborhood? 